Hola, bienvenidos a nuestro programa, episodio 41. Oh, me llamo Dina y este es Bruce. Yo. ¿Cómo se llama el show? Papas en el sillón. Ok, Que bye. Y no han nada. Y nada. Oh my god. Everything was good up to that part. Are we happy? <laughs> you can see my fat body. It's so good. You can see my fat body on camera. <laughs> tiempo de bar, tiempo de bar. Ed, did you give her a mic? She didn't want it. She just gave it to her, bro. No, but you can still hear her. Barely. 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 <laughs> can you hear me, Diana? Do you know? What's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of Couch Potatoes, 40, episode 41. Uh, yeah, that was our intern, who is from the native mud rivers of Chichiwan. I don't know what the other part of the town is called, but we know it's a little village. She came here when she was... How old would you say she was? <laughs> no, yeah. She was like, what, three years old? Yeah. Three? Four? Eight. No way. Older? Hey, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good for you, man. Good for you, bro. Uh, yeah, we're back with another episode. Uh, unfortunately, Edward is not here because he works. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is I, Luis, Moctezuma. Then we have Bruth. It should have, no? Espinosa. No, she just put the paper over there. Oh. Right? Exactly. Uh, yeah, but it's another episode. We're back. We're pretty tired. Had a long day of b-ball, a.k.a. basketball, a.k.a. ball on the court, a.k.a. sport that a little Bow Wow played in that movie like Mike. Had a great movie. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's another episode, another great episode coming for you. We're going to be talking about uh, controversy, culture, kaleidoscopes. Uh, what's another thing that has a k in the beginning? Couches, uh, cars, uh, kiwis. Compasses. What? Compasses. Compasses. <laughs> I don't know what you just said to me, honest. I, w I wanted to understand, but. <gasps> oh no. Um, but yeah, I just want to start off this episode. Um, no, actually, I'm going to wait till the end to say this. But yeah, let's get started. Um, first thing on the list is, you know what? I should have had it up earlier on my laptop, but I didn't. So I'm going to bring it up. Uh, as of recent, it, <laughs> it's an <enough> fire. <laughs> Look at that. Andrew Yang. Serge is enough. To not have fired the media for his comments. Presidential candidate, just saying. And he himself is Chinese. <laughs> Explain first before he starts saying <laughs> no, <laughs> He himself is Chinese. <laughs> just putting it out there. Oh, Yo, shit. what happened? It's not working. Man, you already messing up the TV, bro. Or is the TV messing up me? <laughs> <laughs> and then the Rosa de the music. <laughs> Fan. <laughs> <laughs> A little lock of hair just flowing. <laughs> 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 there we go. Okay, so let's see. Um, what's the best? I know you know what Hollywood Reporter. So what are you, what are you trying to do? If you've heard, a recent comedian who was hired by SNL mm. Saturday Night Live, a very big and famous sketch comedy show that's uh, it's, well comes on Saturdays, Saturday nights. He uh, was fired. They had fired him over. Some claim racist comments ra or racist jokes that he made on um, a podcast, and but then other people brought up other stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it was more than just the the podcast. Yeah, there are other moments. Well, the thing is, it's kind of his shtick. Um, I don't know. I, I, okay, it's not a shtick, but it's it's a common theme throughout his jokes. Yeah, that's his go-to type thing. Yeah, kind of. And okay. what I'm referring to is his. Um, how would I put it? Um, I don't know. I mean, how, how, would I, how, how would I put it? I guess 
Oh, well, they say it here, anti-Asian, homophobic, misogynistic slurs, right? Damn. That's, oh, yeah, wow, okay. That's, uh, whoa. Whoa, who wrote this? That was strong. Not the same article. Oh, here we go. I think this is the one that I sent you guys. So that wasn't too long ago. This has still been kind of blowing up, especially because... Setting up for a date, it's important to select just the right bottle. Keegan, we don't want to hear you right now. What is going on? Oh, pff, duh. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> this is what happens when we want to be technologically <laughs> advanced. We're gonna let it play. We're gonna let it play. Okay. It's official. Shane Gillis is out. It's oh, it's an ad. Okay, sorry. <laughs> With Keegan Michael Key. Thank you, Keegan. Appreciate it. Oh my god. So okay, headline: Shane Gillis out at Saturday Night Live following racial, homophobic slurs in podcast. But in addition with other things that have been found. Yeah. Here's the thing. I don't want to repeat what he said because I don't think it's in my position to do so. Yeah. Uh, only be Also because... Here's the thing. Here's where I stand on this. Another fun fact, though, is also SNL had also hired their first Asian um, comedian. Comedian. Yeah, to come out on actual show. As a matter of fact, I'm going to search him up. How long ago? This is recent. Dude. This is they were announced in the same time. I think, if I'm correct, <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna say what. <laughs> I was about Bowen to say Bowen that. Yang, no, I'm sorry, that is not him. <laughs> this is not good. Oh yeah, Bowen Yang. That's his name. But here's the thing. Wow, this show has been chaotic so far. My gosh, how are we on time? I think we should end this soon already. Ten. Damn. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I, go. I just touched Oh I'm sorry <laughs> I apologize in time But how about You know before I begin This round of applause For Intern opening the show it, was, it takes a lot of guts You Good know job, It's job. late We're tired We're in our downtown studio it's, it's, We had to drive All the way out here It's really tiring traffic You know what I mean you know, Yeah it's tough Yeah I'm it's tough, tired. tough drive If there are people Who have been guests on the show Who say this is not true uh, They're lying don't believe them. False believe news. Me. Yeah, <laughs> they they just hate. They just hate us because they we haven't invited them back. Even though they need to be patient, they need to calm down and and uh, yeah. But going back to what we're saying, so I guess as you know the the head line, I just started so bad. I feel like we should start this episode over. The line. This has been. Bro, ridiculous. just keep going. The fact Here's that you keep no, repeating it is what making it worse. Here's the thing, <laughs> I'm not gonna start over. Well, this is me starting over now, but I'm going to leave all this in. So people are going to see how chaotic this show can get. <laughs> it's going? late. Stop pressuring me to do better, my friend. I want to do good. <laughs> but here's the thing. He made those comments. Here's my problem. I'm going to keep it short. I don't want to go into too, de- too much detail because I want to talk about what this is really about and then ask for your insight. He made some comments. Here's the thing. There have been a lot of jokes before where people... In this case, I've done, I guess, what they call a stereotypically Hispanic accent. Like, hello, my friend, this and that, all that, yeah. right? Um, is it, can it be funny? I think it can be. Here's the thing. If you're making, uh, I guess, a very raunchy, on-the-line type of joke that involves other cultures, other, other lifestyles, whatever it is, um, I think if you're going to do it, if you're going to take that leap, I guess, of faith in that case, that risk... It has to be funny. Yeah. If it's funny, then we realize, or at least for, even if you don't get the joke, you're like, oh, okay, it's starting to click. This is a joke. They don't really feel this way. Or if they do, they're being honest and open about it. But at yeah. least in a way that I can kind of relate or understand it. Or I hate his guts now and I don't like it. Either way, everyone will have the reaction. Though the only problem is, there can, then comes the argument, well... Not everybody laughs at everything. People have a certain uh, level of funny that they adhere to or they find it funny. Like, not everything is funny for everybody. Yeah. But regardless, SNL firing this guy, Shane Gillis. Um, <clears throat> now, if you just read the headline, I think it's very much, well, good job. You know, they fired a, a, a possible racist, homophobe, and, and they got him out of there. This, and he's, you know what? I'm going to be real with you. I think what escalates the situation, and I'm going to ask you to speak right now. It's okay. We had a conversation. If you want to jump in, ask nah, questions. Nah, 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 nah. Because I know you know too much about this. 
Feel free to do so. <laughs> nah, nah, Look, I want to be mellow, but you're making me go up to 130. <laughs> I want to be at a good 90, buddy. But you're making me go to 130. Nah, bro, you good. Keep going, keep okay, going. I, I didn't say nothing. It's because you keep looking at me like I'm just ranting. I'm not ranting. Well, I'm, I'm looking at you because you're talking. Like, well, you, you want me to go look at no, Diana? No, no, or you like, give me eyes and you're like, oh, wow, why don't you just fat guy just shut up? <laughs> okay? I know the look. I've been giving the look many times, but. Bro, this is in your head, bro. I don't know who, what kind of look you're talking about, bro. What's in your head? Listen, man, let me just go back to what I was saying. You know what I mean, man? Uh, we out here talking about this topic <laughs> what is going on <laughs> no, this is you dog <laughs> i'm just tired guys you, i'm trying to keep my you're head delirious bro i am <laughs> i ate pizza probably shouldn't have eaten pizza should have eaten a fruit look at me are you looking at me are you looking at me <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you, you are you are you judging me bro <laughs> <laughs> okay but Back to the top of your oh hand. Oh my god, dog. If it's funny, it's funny. If you don't find it funny, then okay, then you don't find it funny. Yes, sir. That's it, right? Here's the thing. Shit. If I'm correct in the timeline of events that occurred, SNL didn't really make this decision until there was a backlash. public outroar. Yeah, backlash. I usually I call them the Twitter mob. When the Twitter mob gets together, they are a fiery force. They can ruin your career in m- seconds, min- whatever minutes, whatever it is. They can bring something from <laughs> 2000 and something when you were 10 years old talking idi- idiocracy or whatever. I don't know how to use that word anymore. Saying stupid things. Bring it back 10 years later or 19 years later in this case when you're much more mature, much older, different mindset. You've learned and say, look at him. He said this. That's a problem. It could have been a problem, but maybe I did learn. Or maybe I didn't. But that's for you to not assume and find out yourself. Yeah. That's my argument in this. So here's my thing. SNL put out a statement essentially saying, oh, uh, we should have vetted him more. We should have looked deeper into this. But this is my problem. SNL. You've been around for roughly 40 years. One of the longest running sketch show, sketch comedy shows ever, really. Mm. And for some reason, he still exists today. That's another conversation. The thing is, after you came under fire, you came out with an apology. You fired the guy. And it's like, look, right here. After talking with Shane Gillis, we have decided to, that he will not be joining SNL. And so also a spokesperson on the behalf of executive producer Lauren Michaels, who is a, a show legend. Uh, we want SNL to have a variety of voices and points of view within the show. And we hired Shane on the strength of his talent as comedian and his impressive audition for SNL. Okay, well, let me go, I'll go back to that and say, we were not aware of his prior remarks that have surfaced over the past few days. The language he used is offensive, hurtful, and unacceptable. We are sorry that we did not see these clips earlier and that our vetting process was not up to our standard. If there's anybody who should have been fired, if they really feel this way, was the person who's in charge of vetting the comedian. If you thought he was funny as a, and you thought he was talented as a comedian and if you thought his audition was impressive... Then you thought the guy was funny. Yeah. There's a reason why you want to bring him on the show. Hey, relax, bro. No, relax. It's, I'll explain why it upsets <laughs> me, though. <clears throat> but, to, uh, but before I keep moving, me personally, what he said, I don't find funny. Um, not because I'm like, oh, that is one racist white man, which I, I think, I don't know if I mentioned, I feel like him being white also accelerates the situation. Yeah. I think it, if it was at DEFCON 1, it's not at DEFCON 10. I don't know if I'm using that correctly. Yeah, I don't think you are. But <laughs> whatever. Flip it around. I don't care. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that has a lot to do with it. But they weren't funny for me. So, I think they fall flat. You can tell he's kind of trying to be funny or trying to kind of work it. But yeah. if any of the people around him are joking about it much more in the, in the clips that I've seen. So, it's like, okay. Like, I guess. But so maybe somebody else was funny. Maybe to him he thought they were funny. Or he'd just be like, oh, damn, that was a flat joke. But it is what it is. He's fired. That's it. Here's the thing. For a lot of comedians, and now because I've not, I'm not a comedian myself or a stand-up comedian. I'm not that I'm not into it. I just can't do it. I wouldn't be able to do it. It's a hard, tough job. I respect it very much. For some comedians, SNL is almost like the pinnacle of your career. If you do good on that show, it opens so many doors. If you fall flat, you fall flat. You have some cool memories, whatever. But the thing is, this is somebody's career. Um, 
And the problem is, again, it seems, at least to me, like SNL didn't react until after the backlash. And you're telling me again, not, necessarily, not just a TV show, an organization, an empire of a show didn't know what he said in his... Like, it's not like this is old either. Like, it's... I think one of them... One of the podcasts from Rocks made in 2018. <laughs> so it's not like it was like, back in 2000. No. Yeah. It's like, this was recent. And here's, here's the thing. And I, I saw this on another podcast, H3 podcast. Uh, I could be butchering what Ethan said. But he said something along the lines, maybe SNL should have been bold with what... This, they should have handled this differently. I th- here's the thing. A big uh, again, like I said, a big moment was, was when they hired the first ama- Asian uh, comedian to come on the show. I told you, if you want to put in, <laughs> she's pressuring me. It's I'm her. It's her. That's why. No, yeah, I'm insight. good, bro. I'm just. She keeps laughing, so it's making me laugh. But you good, bro? I just. You I keep going. You I keep. Going. I. You know, we should just end it here because <laughs> there's a problem. I let you open the show. And you repay me in this way. <laughs> you know what? Lunch and ice cream are out the window. Ah, he just wanted to get out of there, bro. <laughs> no, it's, can I just, because I'm, I'm, he even said his eye like, wasn't interesting to me. I'm, I haven't. Yeah, you keep going, bro. I'm seeing a lot. Yeah, you without, are. With, with that laugh and those yeah. eyes, bro, like, <laughs> you're saying everything. Yeah, okay. Yeah, whatever. So just again, ignore her, bro. You're doing good, bro. I th- imagine this. A bold move on SNL's part. We're hiring our first Asian actor to be part of the show. Yeah. The they, show fired, they hired him before they, they hired this guy. Right? I think, I think, yeah. I'm not sure how the hiring process works. I think, yeah. yeah. Now we hire this guy who has said certain things. Um, here's the thing. The other guy found it offensive? We made history. Oh, I don't know. I haven't looked into it. I should have probably looked into it, but here's the thing. They hired him. History is made. We're hiring this guy who has made some remarks, right? He, yeah. It's a common theme. Why not be like, hey, we're hiring because of his talent and his ability. Yeah. Imagine if they both click together. Maybe he stops saying the jokes because he learns from this actor. Maybe they are offensive. I'm not going to do it. Like, it's, it's this whole idea of like, just as soon as a group of people get pissed off, there's an immediate reaction to appease that crowd and then comes this whole idea of cancel culture like like we heard like in um, Dave Chappelle's special obviously he makes a joke of it yeah. but Kevin Hart he said some things a long time ago they, I guess to some people were very offensive if you were to really understand it it was a joke yeah if you break I mean the problem is if you have to break down a joke it's not funny anymore it's not funny yeah so a group of people were outraged Kevin Hart had the opportunity to host the Oscars he lost. He backed out. Yeah. He lost the opportunity. Not because he was, I don't think he's being petty, but rather, you know what? Yeah. It's not good. For the people. Yeah, it's not good. For the people, I want to I want to have fun. But he even said, the first thing that's going to be in people's minds is this scandal. This whole thing. Rather than, I want to have people have fun, lay back, but it's not going to happen. Hey, that's, that's game, bro. I guess. But back to the topic. Can't sorry everybody. We had to take a quick break. Uh, what are we at? 20 minutes now or such? Something on there. Uh, we were talking about the firing of Shane Gillis. SNL fired him over some remarks uh, that were considered homophobic, racist, and misogynistic from a couple a podcast and a couple of clips that he in which he's shown saying certain things or around others saying certain things. And he was fired. And I guess to recap on what I was saying... It was kind of, I feel like SNL on their part should have been, you know what? We're not going to fire him. We're going to have a conversation. We're going to talk about this, where he really stands. Because we don't know. We we can't be like, oh, he's a full-blown racist. Yeah. Or he'd just be a comedian who has some bad jokes that don't work. Yeah. That he thinks are funny, but now maybe, after this, maybe they weren't that funny after all. Um, Or maybe he is a full-blown racist. The thing is. We don't know. Yeah, yeah, the conversation would probably yeah. never happen. At least we're not already automatically being screwed. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he's he's out. Yeah, he's done. Oh, hopefully he's not. I hope maybe he's still oh, yeah, good hopefully. somewhere. If in the end he's not a yeah, I'm pretty person. sure it's, it's gonna yeah. be hard either way. Especially yeah, with that title on there. Yeah. Uh, could you silence your phone? Sorry, Dina. Could you silence it? Because you can actually hear it. 
in the recording. We talked about this last episode. <laughs> For five minutes, I went on a rant. Then I know we did. Complaining. That's true. It's not me being rude. That's just me trying to clear the audio because if it was one, okay, it was like three. <sighs> Let me bring it back to Mellow. You want water? No, nah, it's right. down there. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's how I feel about the situation. Um, at least that's what I had in mind. I kind of lost track after we had that short little break. But before I kind of ask your thoughts into it, let me read his apology. Which I thought was kind of funny. <clears throat> so Shane Glitz tweeted, It feels ridiculous for comedians to be making serious public statements, but here we are. I'm a comedian who's funny enough to get to SNL. Or to get SNL. That can't be taken away. Fair enough. He was hired. He got the job. And then this happened. Of course, I wanted an opportunity to prove myself at SNL, which now he doesn't. Yeah. But understand, it would be too much of a distraction. It's fair. I respect the decision they made. I'm honestly grateful for the opportunity. I was always a Mad TV guy anyway. <laughs> it's funny because I am as well. I love Mad TV. Um, Over SNL? Yeah. I mean, there's some great uh, sketches. Yeah. Like, there's one about the the fonts behind Avatar, the movie. Like, Papyrus or whatever. <laughs> this, I'll show it to you later. It's pretty. It's great. Mad TV had Miss Swan, right? They had a lot of things. No, but I remember that one yeah, specifically. Yeah. Miss, Swan. Miss Swan. And I remember some guy with the bowl cut. Who acted like a child, right? He yeah, had a mom. Oh, I remember that one. Um, Stewart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Don't want to <laughs> me. <laughs> oh man, classic. That was a man. spot on uh, impression, bro. Here's the thing. This is how I think of it. I remember just them too. Yeah, before we get into it, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I feel like Mad TV was for the. Um, it was made. For for the urban, not okay, not urban kid. It's, no, it was made for the kid growing up in the hood. Mm-hmm. I guess if it, it had a better word for it, but I guess that if we're to label it, give it a label. Yeah. It's the title of my new book, "Growing Up in the Hood." <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah, it was because a lot of the jokes they said that today would not, they would not fly, fly by. Yeah. That was a lot. Even if you didn't joke, you would hear it. Because in people's minds, that that's funny. Maybe some were inappropriate. Maybe the way they did it wasn't funny. And they really meant it as in, in a malicious manner. But some were like, oh, I'm just repeating what I saw. And it's hilarious. Or, or people I grew up around are stereotypes that I ended up seeing were actually reality. Like, oh, we do eat a certain thing. This, this, and that. That's Hispanics. Da, da, da. You know, different yeah. things. But it is what it is. It's, um, yeah, I was a Mad TV guy. But, yeah, Shane Gillis. At the end, you know, I guess... If his, his jokes did fall flat, they weren't funny, then they could see how someone would be very apprehensive and offended by everything. Yeah. Um, I guess SNL essentially did what they had to do to take care of themselves. Uh, somebody lost a job, and now it's just a lot going on. And I think it just adds on to this whole thing of cancel culture, where it's just like, and again, I'm not the number one guy in all this. I could be, honestly, I could be speaking out of my butt, and I'm totally wrong. I'm incorrect. And you could be like, he's an idiot, and that's it. That's fine. I'm, I'll live with that. Maybe I'll learn as I get older. I still have some time like time left, and we're gonna continue. And then I'll learn. Maybe I'll, I'm gonna look more into this. Maybe I'll find out more. I'll discover more. And I was wrong. And I'll maybe say in the next podcast, I was wrong, guys. But anyways, like, yeah. I mean, what, what are your thoughts? On what you know, what I just said, kind of what you understood, and the whole situation. What do you mean, my thoughts, bro? Like, like, what do you think? So they have fired him. There you go. I guess that's what I. Mean. You, you said it. <laughs> you said everything. No, I mean, no, but you, I mean, you, like, you think they should have fired him. Nah, I don't. I mean, okay. like you said, like, everyone finds certain things funny. Yeah. Uh, they could have gone about it a different way, too, like you said. Talk to him. Uh, maybe tell him to not make those jokes. Make him apologize, you know. Uh, but to, like, take that away from him. Like, yeah. Kevin Hart is, is rough. I mean, like you said, I guess that's not how to do what they had to do to, like, cover their, their backs. But at the end of it, too, though, I mean, I don't know. They're, they're comedians at the end of the day. Yeah. like, And this dude's, what, like, 30-something? Yeah. Right? So he came up, like, probably with no barrier, like, to when it comes to his jokes, you know? Like most comedians. So, like, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, dude. That's pretty much it. I mean, you, you, you said most of it. <laughs> you said most of yeah, it. I just, <laughs> yeah, I just felt when I heard about this, I was like, I found it very interesting. Yeah. Um, but it's... But yeah, and I think they could have came up a different way to to yeah. fix the problem. But I mean, they, they did what they did already. And there's no going back. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens from here. It's like, did you hear his his routines before? His no, I I never no, heard so of him. Yeah, before. I've never heard of him. Either. This is the first time, yeah. I heard, which is also why SNL is a big thing. It's like, oh, he because I think it's every so couple of years where they bring a new generation of people in, and it's like, yeah, see, look, Jink and the problem of pushing boundaries. How yeah. far can you go in your jokes? If they're funny, they're funny. If they're not, then I mean, I know me and Dina talked about this a while back. It was. I think episode 25, you were asleep. It was when we saw the oh, couch. Okay. And we talked about, like, certain, like, The Office. Like, they announced that they might do a reboot or something. Yeah. I don't know if that's on, on the NBC streaming service. A lot of the jokes they made on there, especially, yeah. like, season one, is where Michael was a <laughs> Michael. little darker. Yeah. Or, like, pers- like certain things. <laughs> oh, or, like, no, com- like the basketball episode. The secret yeah, Weapon. Nah, they would. Stanley. Uh, they would not, bro. A lot of that will fly over people's heads, and it just sparks outrage. Next thing you know... The office reboot they has been canceled. They And it's like, I don't know. I mean, again, I could be, we could be wrong. We, maybe we're, we're bad people and our perceptions are wrong, right? Yeah. The thing is, we will never know because this is how we think or this is how we grew up or this is how we understand everything around us. I'm not going to, I don't even know what I just said in those last three sentences, but the thing is, we don't know everything, but from what we know, this is how we feel. If you disagree, that's fine. Yeah. If you agree, great. We can have a conversation. Or even with people who disagree, we can have a conversation. But the fact is that we, to at least have a conversation. Yeah, and just based upon like what's happened before, that's our yeah. perception of what's gonna happen with yeah. these other things. Yeah, and this thing like, this is just like I feel like this is the tip of the iceberg. I feel like maybe this whole like Twitter mob or cancel culture maybe it'll die down someday. Me personally, I think it's only gonna grow. I think it's going to get to a point where everybody's going to have to go through the Twitter feed and be like, did I say something stupid when I was in sixth grade or something or something about somebody or did I say somebody or did I say something to somebody in my past? I feel like people already do that, bro. What do you mean? Like check their Twitter. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like the first. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that already does. But I guess us like just not common folk, but just the everyday person be like, damn, I need to get this job real bad. Check like if you're tweeting crazy stuff yeah. that's just not funny, then yeah, you're probably not gonna get the job, buddy. But if it's if your profession really is comedy and you're really trying and this is your thing, and maybe there's certain things you thought were funny or you think you're a comedian and <laughs> you uh, think yeah, you think you're a comedian. <laughs> you try something. You try. You thinking you're pushing the boundaries, walking the fine line, right? It's like okay, cool. You might have said some things that are not okay. Or for some people, another case. And it's, it gives me a headache because it's like, man, what, what are we doing? But like, <laughs> it's like when you. I think the two prime examples, or at least the main one, was Dave Chappelle's recent special, Sticks yeah. and Stones, which I think was one of his best, because I think he just really he just goes in <laughs> and everything. And I'm, I don't know if you've seen the. Well, let me let me search it up, so you can see. The critics, the way. I, I just use, I mean, Rotten Tomatoes, I mean, it's iffy every now and then, but. What would they give them? Oh, you'll see right now. So, you'll see the big, the line that's drawn between. So, they gave it a 35%. For a while, it was 35%? much lower. 35%? Yeah. Why? 35, look at that. Why? And look at the audience score. edgy but empty sticks and stones won't break any bones but it won't elicit many laughs either i don't know what special they saw <laughs> i don't know maybe there's maybe it's the people it's who funny. maybe it's the people who heard it you know maybe they were one of the groups that he mentions you know yeah it's like and here's the thing man it's and somebody said this and i know this is a comedy special but there's somebody who tweeted something i think it was chris duckman or Movie critic who watch on YouTube, he says something like, without the director, the movie critic would not exist. Without comedians, comedic critics would not exist. They essentially give you a job. Yeah. So my thing is, I guess maybe you want to, you don't want to, I, I, 
I don't know. I, I don't even know how to explain it, man. It's it's, it's weird because look at this. 35% running. And again, maybe this is this doesn't accurately depict how everybody feels. But look at the audience score. 99%. They thought it was either good, funny, or they, they understood what was happening. And yeah, some jokes really pushed the boundary. They really pushed the line. <laughs> yeah. But they're funny in something. I mean, I'm not, maybe I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, I get but it. They, yeah, they listed a laugh yeah. for like, aha, uh-huh, okay. You're like, okay, like, yeah, I get what that, he's saying. Yeah. He's saying something. I understand it. Again, you have to realize comedians, I think, have one of the toughest jobs in the world. And some people, well, fine, fine, it's police. Uh, what, are you, uh, so, what are you talking about? Meh, sit down. I'm talking about comedians right now. I'm talking about the people who are assigned to be observers of everyday society, everyday life, and tell it to us how it is for them. The people who have to stand up on a stage for an hour and endure people who may or may not laugh at their jokes. Risk it all, put it on the line. And for some, they made it out. Others, unfortunately, they have not. So, yeah, man. I mean, I, I don't even know where I'm going with this. This is... You seem very passionate about this stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I guess because recently, like, I've been getting into stand-up comedy a lot. Like, I enjoy it. I, I, I respect it. Yeah. I respect it more than having when I was growing up because I didn't really get it. Yeah. Now I get why, you know, when you think of Eddie Murphy or... Uh, Oh my gosh, names are slipping all out of my head. People are gonna hate me, but you know, it's just people who are considered <laughs> legends. Why they're considered legends yeah. in their in their in their feet in their in their jobs or their art, their talent, because they said things. Maybe some of us think, but don't want to say out loud. But they've taken the opportunity to do it on a stage, on a show know, that's a gonna lot be of streaming, people, yeah. yeah, streaming on TV or Netflix. So or I mean, th- like this this. I didn't get a chance to see. His, I've seen clips from his other specials he's done on Netflix, but this one I saw from beginning to end. I get why he's considered a legend. I understand it clearly now, because Dave Chappelle does not give a dime. He doesn't, bro. He's not. I don't think he. Ever he has, speaks his mind yeah. and he does it in a funny manner. And maybe I didn't understand his jokes. Maybe they are offensive. Maybe they are wrong. Okay, I am a horrible person. I'll take. <laughs> I'll take. I'll accept it. I know. In the last podcast, I. <laughs> was almost crying saying i want to be a better person but whatever i don't know i mean you i mean you saw that special right yeah and i think he's hilarious bro like he's he's funny most of the jokes honestly i i was laughing like you said some of them i was like all right that was like it's yeah. it's not that good but i was like it's I get it. it's kind of funny like <laughs> yeah, like, all right, all right. yeah. <laughs> i would see the facial expression from some of the like the I audience i love that I some love would be like that. ah and some would just someone's be like, like like straight face yeah. I'm like damn bro but, I mean that's what you're gonna get I mean yeah. there's a again I don't wanna repeat any of his jokes I just talk about like moments like there's one where he talks about oh I'm gonna do uh, he does two impressions one of them and well the funny one is he I forgot who who he does the first one but the second one he's like uh, duh, I'm gonna get me down <laughs> and he's like and it's, it's funny cause it kinda gives you insight on how we are today people Donald Trump Donald Someone Trump. yelled in the back and Donald Trump. He hits him. It's you. <laughs> and then he goes off and it's like, I, I'm like, he's not wrong. Yeah. He's I started like, laughing because I was like, I didn't expect that. Yeah. I was like, he's funny. like, you are the worst people that to entertain. It's like, it's, we reached the point where it's like, I mean, because uh, even nowadays you see this conversation of free speech. What can, what can't we say? Um, if you read the book 1984, I'm not saying it's that bad, but this whole this whole thing of new speak, where there's certain things that have been eliminated from the language, right? So it's like, great book. We should probably read that one. Which sure. It's fiction, but it's it's very, it's an illustration of a certain society, that some aspects we kind of see today. Yeah. So yeah, but um yeah, I mean that's all I have to really say about this. I um. Yes, I don't want to get too much into because <laughs> I know I'm going to just rage out. I'm just going to keep going. Well, not rage out, but I'm just going to keep going. I would say watch it. Yeah, watch it, watch if anything, special. watch it. Watch this. And we didn't go into too, too much that because it's like Bill Burr's special, Paper Tiger. I think it's great, personally, yeah. as well. He does, he does a lot of observations about us today. A lot of funny jokes. Um, the one about the when he's reading over the in the court. 
No, oh. <laughs> yeah. Again, I don't want to repeat it because it's better if you hear it from them. Because yeah. this is great. Um, but yeah, watch them. Paper Tiger. It's on Netflix. Sticks and Stones on Netflix as well. Yeah. Very controversial topic. So, yeah, just, I think. You know, going with an open mind. Yeah. No. You, if, even they're if you jokes. Funny, they're comedians. Yeah, analyze it. If you want to break yeah. it down like a critic and analyze it, analyze it. Just look into it, and maybe you like it or you won't. We'll see. Um, but yeah, let's move. Let's move on. Before I keep going. How are we on time, Dina? I'm sorry. Thirty nine minutes. Oh snap! Oh gosh, I apologize, everybody. <laughs> I just went off. I just um. Hold on. Whoa, let me. Why are you messages, whoa, bro? Let me uh. Let me hide this. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> should we talk about this i don't know if we what? should i don't know uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah. i just laughed we shouldn't i don't know bro all right our producer our intern says we should not because it is a very serious you know what no we're not we won't talk maybe next week maybe let's look more in- i'm gonna look more into it understand the purpose of it i mean you should understand the purpose of it no, but look, look it, like, I guess the reception of it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that, that's a better. Yeah. I don't want to go in empty-handed, empty-headed, and just say nonsense. Yeah. I did give it a thumbs up, though, because I thought it was, I'm like, good, good post in the group chat. I but, saw it. Yeah, I like, saw it, too. I saw it. No, but not, like, when they sent it, like, before that. Oh, yeah. They were passing it on, like, uh, on Spanish, on yeah. Spanish news. Really? Well, my mom, my mom's one that called me over. Say, you know. And I just go more into it after, <laughs> like, the next time we talk about it. Okay, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Save it, there. Yeah, all, I, all I'm going to say is it caught me off guard. Yeah. Because I didn't see this where it says, oh, graphic, whatever. No, nah, yeah, bro. I just saw, like, kids. I'm like, oh, like Dina said, a Ross or Marsh's commercial. Like, where, where's the Ross logo? That's what I Marsh's. thought, too, bro. And then I was like, okay, this kid's running. Um, Oh, she's taking off her sock. Why? Oh, her leg is. We'll just talk about it. Let's we'll talk yeah. about it. <laughs> okay, and this is going to sound, they probably know by this time, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it just... If you don't know what you're watching, as soon as you it see it, you're going to be throws like... throws you off guard. Whoa! Bro. I had to watch it like two or three times. I was like... Again, it wasn't entertaining. It was like, okay, I see what they're trying to say. Especially the organization that is founded on like very sensitive topic in that sense. But... Oh, man. This thing, I, I guess I laughed at the fact of how caught off guard I was. When I first saw it, but yeah, we'll talk about it next time. That's with that. We know. I, I would like to hear Edward's. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying it, too. Yeah. Uh, we'll just wait next week. Look at that! Oh, I'm a meme. Basketball. Is it? Like, <laughs> but yeah, so it's just a video I sent from one of our old podcasts. One of my reactions to. it. A conversation that we were having with a guest episode 24 from Craig watch it it's great um great guest too uh but moving forward um uh, oh actually I did want to talk about something uh cause I texted Dina yesterday and we were talking about well, we got talking oh I wish Edward was here because it'd be cool to have his perspective but I talk about what when canceling on people when you kind of make plans canceling on people yeah why do you feel bad why do I feel bad? Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah, why do you feel bad? Because you've said before, I feel bad. You know, I make plans. Like, because here's the thing. Like, I'm gonna present a situation. You're saying canceling on people or telling people I can't go to whatever they're inviting me to. Or oh, either or one. both. Yeah, they're kind of in, in the same realm, sort of. Because think about it like this. Let's say somebody say, "Hey, come through." Okay, yeah, I think I'll be able to. But then there's something you really want to do, right? I can't do that. You can't do that. No. Why? It's just my upbringing. My parents, they told me, if you make plans, go through with them. <laughs> That's it. My upbringing, bro. My upbringing. Uh, back when in I was, when I was five, bro. When I was five years old, bro. Back in my hood, dog. Like, <laughs> nah, nah, just my parents taught me to be like that. And that way, I don't, I'm not conflicted with whether to go to one place or another. I'm like, if I already made these plans, why well, am I going to cancel them and go to the other thing? Like, I'm making myself look bad, and then, like, I'm... So, do the people involved... In the, in the parties or the groups, right? What's going on? Either one. We'd, we'd say it's a two-choice situation, right? Do they have any effect on that or no? What do you mean? Oh, uh, me canceling or not going? Yeah. No. That's just 
Why you smiling? No, I'm just smiling. <laughs> After your recent experiences, would you change that answer? Nope. I'll still do it. If I already said... If <laughs> 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 Come on. They're not gonna know. They don't know what we're talking about. This is an inside joke. You don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> you a clown ass. Hey, hey. Right, so point is, uh, nah, bro. I can't. I just even on those. Like she books. If she books me, <laughs> she tells me. Like, she tells me like, mom, speak to my agent. <laughs> She tells me, don't me and my brother. She tells us, she's like, don't forget the so and so date. You guys have to go to a party with me. Okay. Family. Okay, I understand that. Cause fam, again, it's almost by default. Family's family. Like, yeah. if you, especially your mom. If you say, yeah, mom, I'm gonna go to. You gotta be like, mom, my friends want me to go do this. Mm, I don't wanna go to. Unless it's an emergency, maybe you can see. It, but if you guys way. tell me to do something with you guys, and then my mom tells me to do something, I told her I already have plans. Really? Yeah. I don't like canceling on people because, you know, I made other plans. It's like, oh, no, okay, I'm going to cancel. You, you guys have to go over there. Are you sure that, you sure that the parties involved have nothing to do with it? They will have no effect on you. Nope. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to go do you it. You truly are a man of character. But <laughs> I respect But it. say I do have to cancel, I mean, I let them know. I'd be like, you know, I'm sorry. I, I can't make it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's my bad. Like, I'll, okay, try, like I'll try and make it up to them, but... You haven't confirmed, but you haven't hung out with that person in a while because you've canceled or you've said no the other times, <laughs> right? It's, I've done it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you my scenario. You're me right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just not a weasel like I am. Yeah. A snake. Not a backstabber. There's a difference. A snake and a weasel, they're animals. They slither around. I think a weasel. I don't even know what a weasel looks like, to be honest. So let me go back. Okay. <laughs> now me in trouble, they're bro. doing another. <laughs> hey man, we're all about controversy on this show, brother. <laughs> trying to get me in trouble, though. Man, don't cry. I mean, we'll cut it out if he wants. Nah, nah cut I, it don't out. Care. I don't care, bro. I only went, I only went on a thirty-minute rant talking <laughs> nonsense. I, was, I don't care, bro. I'm gonna look back at this one day. I'm like, man, it's funny. Hey. We. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> so we. <woo. laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, you said no, right? Yeah. Some friends want to hang out. Hey, let's hang out. You guys. Yeah, I guess us. In this yeah. Case. Okay. But that person says, "Hey, can we do something today?" I've already made plans with you guys. No. We haven't made plans together. No. You know. So it's at the same time. Yeah, you know how we can do last minute. How some people like, you know, let's go to the movies or whatever. Depends on what we do. Okay, we're gonna go eat. We're gonna go out to the movies. Oh. Go eat somewhere. Well, it depends on them too. It depends on what everyone wants oh, to do. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So. What would put like okay movies? What would go? What would make you want to switch from that to switch to the other person? What them? What would it take for them to do for you to be like ah no movies tonight with you guys? I'm gonna go with them. That that that's when it comes down I guess to how comfortable I am with them. Mm. Okay. So now we're getting deep into it, huh? <laughs> now, now this is what I want to hear. <laughs> what? You okay, just, it's cool. You're just digging deep yeah. into my... <laughs> yeah, I want to get in deep. my thoughts. How, how are we on time, by the way? I might cut out... 45. Yeah, I'm cut out like 10 minutes. <laughs> cut out everything. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is not air <laughs> this episode. Honestly... You, you need to have structure, bro. Are we st- are we still even doing the podcast right now, or is no? Are we you gonna, are, this are you gonna, is the podcast. Are you gonna like? Cut, this is what I want. Are you gonna cut this no, off? I, this is what yeah. I'm gonna cut it. This is what I love. This is what I want out of every episode. Well, I see, want the, drama, controversy. <laughs> I want bloodthirst. <laughs> I think so we doing need Edward now. here, bro. That's what we need. Oh, too. he's he's gonna be here next time. Yeah, we're he gonna go deep to into here. it. But um, and let's close this episode out. Great episode. <laughs> I mean, that was crazy, but I think this is one of our funnier episodes. It was not. It was pretty funny. Yeah. It was insane. <laughs> it was insane. I mean, I say this about every other episode. We but. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Dang, chill, bro. Yeah, I'm going to cut your intro out. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely nah, am. Nice, Matt. Are you going to put it on the Instagram? Yeah, I just might do put that. Put that one on the Instagram. Yeah, and then I'll cut it out, and then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That Thank was, you, I bro. think that's the I best one, it. bro. Appreciate it. That, that's going to be it's our promo. It's like an intro. 
People yeah. are gonna be like, "What's going on? Why yeah, is what she is <laughs> happening? Yeah, <laughs> why is Dan? Why is Dina there? Why is she talking Spanish? <laughs> 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 is it gonna be an all Spanish it's episode? All Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get three hundred views just on that. <laughs> And they're like, oh, this is not what I expected. <laughs> just a guy, a fat kid going insane who needs a haircut while his homie is in outer space trying to figure out how to just, come back just, down. Just nodding. Just up nodding. <laughs> but how are we in time? Let me, I have one final 55. thing 55. Okay. Yeah, 50. Here's, I have, close. No, I'm, I'm going to be serious now. If I cry, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, dang. Wait. <laughs> what are you, you going to say? <laughs> I'm going to get serious now. I'm Vin Diesel. I'm not bald and buff. Can you do this? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny. I'm a, com- I'm a comedian. <laughs> what are you gonna I say? push the boundaries. What are you going to say, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so, bro, say what you got to okay, say, okay. bro. No, I get, see, I get like this when it when I'm when I try to be vulnerable, I get nervous. Um, no, we had a conversation earlier. About friendships, right? And connections. And well, I said earlier, I was like, dang, I have been a crappy friend to a lot of people. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I just. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, but <laughs> let's, on, in all seriousness, I wish Edward was. I kind of I wish Edward was here to do this, but. Me too. Dude. I feel like I, I've never apologized to you guys. For what? for what I did when I was what with a certain individual. Ah, and bro. I just kind of catch you guys up. <laughs> bro. Um, no, I mean, see, it could be like, ah, oh, it's all good, but. Uh, I mean, it's all based good, on, dude. Based on what you said earlier today, it didn't <laughs> sound all good to me. It's all good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, this show's going off course. <laughs> all right, let me go back. Let me go back. You're good, you're good, bro. No, but it's, I personally, looking into your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I do uh, yeah, good thumbnail. <laughs> I I do want to apologize because you know I it's as much as I like to blame like oh well you know it's because I was with, I want to keep the other person happy at the end of the day I I wasn't like a oh, full grown adult but I'm a person I have free will I can do what I want and I can oh, I could have handled the situation differently I could have put my foot down in certain scenarios certain moments. Um, yeah, no, cause I, when you explained it, I was like, you're right. Like I did kind of like, as I, in the beginning I did say, you know what, we're going to stick together yeah. brothers in arms. And I went, so you know, buddy. So it was yeah, like, cool yeah, it did become too cool. Or like with Dina too, like she, I mean, we met each other in ninth grade, but it's like, sometimes I feel like we didn't really get close to maybe 10 <laughs> or yeah, maybe even now, even when I left to Syracuse, like you're right. I didn't tell you when I left. You kind of, yeah, you actually found out when I was already there. You hit me up, I think, to hang out or something. And I was like, I'm already here. Um, and then, I mean, Dina just stopped talking and, uh, yeah, that's just a bad friend. I feel like to this, I mean, there's also a recent situation where I feel like I still am. I'm trying, like, I know I joke around, like, oh, I want to be a better person. I do in the end, especially when it comes to being friends because Damn. it's like... I don't know, because I don't want to cry. <laughs> no, because there's certain people. I actually wrote this about, <laughs> I wrote about this recently and for, for a class I'm in. Um, it's crazy because people who I talked to were very, was very close to them. I thought I was going to be talking to them to this day um, in high school. Um, I haven't spoken a word to them. Uh, a lot of them don't even know. Or probably don't even know my situation in terms of Syracuse. Some of them don't even know that I don't even go there anymore. Um, or why I came back. Yeah. Or when if I needed help, a lot of them, their backs were turned. So it's like, and to the people who I kind of pushed away, in this case, you guys, you came through. And, and not necessarily like, yo, man, I'm going to give you that, that money to go back, right? Or this and that. <laughs> but in, or something. <laughs> give me the $60,000. <laughs> Come no. on, Bruce. I oh, need it, bro. I need it, man. <laughs> I need to go back to school. <laughs> no, but it's but you came through in in in, in a sense of emotional support in, in a moment where I kid you not, I've the bottom of the barrel. Like I've never felt crappier than that moment. Um, but you guys were there, 
and even even Edward, who I who I kind of stopped. We, we talked on and off in in high school. In high we school. met each other. We hung out when we could. But when I got to Syracuse, like it's, I didn't really talk to Edward at all. And then coming back, like he was one of the few ones who actually, you know, I'll do the podcast with you guys. It'd be cool. And then, and that's that's. I mean, that's the thing I started to realize too. Why I wanted to start the. Po- I know I said like, oh, you know, I want to create content yeah. and this, this, and that. But the reality is, in our busy lives, it was an opportunity for me to at least have an hour to, or the forty-five minutes, half an hour, twenty minutes. Whether it's we play, it gives us a reason to go play basketball and then meet up later. To at least hang out with you guys, at least take a moment. To at least appreciate the few moments we have at least to share. That made me cry, bro. Uh, no, no, I don't want to have to cry. No, it's because no, because you learn, and it's and the unfortunate part, and then I I piss myself off when I when I think about it is I didn't realize this until I went through the crap that I went through. I lost a lot of friends. Um, oh, I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> I almost lost uh, a lot of people. Like, well, recently, too, I've told you guys what happened with the, oh, man, with a certain uh, family friend. And then, <laughs> I have to laugh it off. But the thing um, is, here's the thing. And I lost, since I felt like I lost everything. I even lost, like, you guys know, like, I go to church a lot and that. I lost a lot of, like, faith in that sense. Like, it, everything about me, I lost. Even that individual who I was very much in love with, I'll say that. I lost that person as well. Not just that, as a friend as well. Um, luckily, those in my past who I had a certain relationships with, you know, whether friendship-wise or any other any form, I'm starting to kind of reconcile and work my way back. Some others I haven't been able to because there's just no response, which I understand. I screwed up, I screwed up. That That, that is what it is. But it's like, um, yeah, you just learn, man. It's, it's weird because I don't even know how we got to this thing, but I mean... I re- I just want you guys to know I appreciate you guys and Edward if you watch this I hope you do watch it because we do need views. Um, <laughs> I hope we get the views now. Uh, yeah, just I appreciate you guys very much. I appreciate you guys for helping me with this because at first, like I said, my intention was maybe you know just do something help me with my content. I need stuff for my portfolio. You know what I mean? But it's like now I've grown to love the moments that we share. Yes, even if it's thirty minutes of me ranting on. A man who made racist jokes and po- sounding like I'm completely defending him or even possibly defending Charles Manson in the last episode. Um, you talked about Charles Manson? Yeah, we did. You wrote it in your notes. I saw it. Defending Manson. Something like that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, I went back to it. I was like, it kind of does sound. But I correct. I'm like, I'm not defending him. Or some, something like that. I don't know if you wrote it. Or maybe the episode before. I don't remember. But... No? Oh, maybe I did. <laughs> I mean, I just wrote in my <laughs> notes. Like, maybe I should correct it. But it's like... I'm close. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Defending Charles. <laughs> Defending Charles. There you go, yeah. But it's... No, yeah. It's, I'm not going to cry anymore. It's okay. You got through the tough part. Yeah, but... I was going to make me cry, dog. It's just... No, you learn. And it sucks that things like what have happened in my life have to happen. But... Again, it's a, I feel like it's all learning experience. I feel like we're all... Some people don't believe... I believe in some form of destiny. I, not Drake's song, but like God's plan for me. And I feel like I've been blessed with you guys. Regardless of how much we don't see each other, we do see each other. Every time I, we do meet up, it's, it's, a, it's a moment of bliss, of happiness. It's joyful. Yeah, we may mess with each other. We joke around with each other. We clown each other. But I feel like it's all, in the end, it's all in good spirits. Because that's how we are. And then we, because there's, as much as we do bring each other down, clown each other, there's always a line of respect that we have. That, a respect almost in the sense of like, I've taken my time out to, to be with you, to, to be around you in your presence. And yes, even though it may require us to be like, hey man, I'm busy. I can't hang out with you today because I got to do other things. When in reality, you hanging out with us. Um, it's just, yeah. And yeah, even to the guests that have come on the show, like people, like a friend from Syracuse, Nessie, that was a great episode too, having uh, years of not seeing her, talking to her, or even, even Jen, uh, having her on the show as well. It, it was, it was cool because it's like, it's an opportunity to finally connect, maybe even reconcile what was gone or at least spark it up again. Cause even if we don't hang out again, 
we'll at least have 40, 50, 60, 100, whatever, how many episodes of memories, of conversations, of, uh, yeah, of moments to be shared. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to, I'm going to stop ranting now, but um, <laughs> I'm going to let Bruce speak now. No, but, <laughs> nah, <I'm getting laughs> but <up>. no, it's, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, I guess at the end of the day, I, I, I'm close my eyes now. Um, I appreciate you guys very much and I hope you guys understand that as much as I may lag or take long to respond or if you guys are like hey when are we meeting up and I say it the night before instead of Wednesday like I said I was going to do um, just know that you guys are always in my thoughts and prayers and if you ever need anything uh, I'll be honest financially I can't really help you out homie uh, but I mean man I'll try you know, rob a bank or something uh, no, I just know that I'm, I'm I'll hope you know that I'm there for you. I think that's the most important thing. Not that, not even just that, oh, I'm there for you, but at least that you know that. Because there's some people who, like recently, well, I mean, I've talked to you guys about this, uh, a friend that went through something. I, I had to find out through somebody else. I had no idea. And I, I truly believe it was because they felt that they couldn't depend on me or they couldn't uh, have a conversation like that with me. Um, and I feel like in the end, yeah, relationship does, it is a two-way street, but I feel like in some cases, uh, there are people who carry more of a load than the other person. And I think that does lead to, other, I mean, this is a whole nother conversation as well, but I guess my message to everybody listening and or watching is just appreciate those who stick around because moments fly by so quick. It's like we graduated in 2014. It's 2019. It's been five years since we left high school. And yet we still managed to, to connect. And I know I'm, I keep saying I'm going to end it. And I'm going to end it right now. I'm going to end it for sure. But it's just, I, like I told you, I was, I was going to get serious at the end of the show. I was going to get real. But yeah, that was just something I want to say, at least on camera. Because I feel like this at least puts me in the hot seat of like, this, I mean, there's evidence now. If I suck as a friend, you'd be like, hey, dog, episode 41, minute 37, 9, More like with 9 seconds. Something. Oh, yeah, 57, <laughs> 9 seconds. You said you were going to do this and that. And then, yeah, now you can hold me in uh, res as being res not being responsible for what I'm lacking or being responsible for what I am doing. But, yeah, so in the end, I just hope you guys know that I, that I am there for you in any way that I can be. Because I feel like there are some people I thought would be there. They weren't there. When I needed them the most. So, yeah, I just appreciate those around you. And, yeah, no, they obviously, by default, like, family is always going to be there. They're, I mean, there's some family who don't give a poop. And there's some, though, who uncles, cousins, mom, dad, whatever, that will always be there. But sometimes you got to look outside the house. And then you see those, like, at the end, they are family, too. It's not just an annoying friend. Or annoying fat kid with a bad lineup, or a native person from Chichiwan a Village, or Mud Rivers, you know, or a, a, a young skinny boy from the depths of Ethiopia and and or Egypt, wherever he's from, or even uh, another friend from who's really an 80 year old man in a 23 year old body. It's those friends that you kind of you miss out on because you're moving forward so much you don't take the time to thank them and it sucks that when they're gone that's when you're like damn like what was it that andy said at, in the, at the end of my office uh, i wish you knew you were in the good old days yeah before. before they became the good old days yeah so yeah take the time to appreciate those around you this is my message to you and if you're crying now that means you have a heart <laughs> if you're not, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> but I'm I'm ending up. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a way of cutting you off. Bro. Yeah, what a way coming out. <laughs> thank you, intern. <laughs> but no, but it, but to bring some levity in situation. Thank you guys for watching. I'm ending here. I'm I'm gonna end it now. Subscribe. Turn the notifications on so you know when we release a new episode. You'll know exactly when it's out. And help us reach 100 subscribers. Tell your friends, your families, your cousins, your aunties, your uncles, your grandpa who might pass away the next day.
but at least he left us with a subscription. <laughs> uh, that was horrible. Oh I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but, um, you know, Ian jokes. It, I'm a comedian. I'm a funny man. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Shout out to Kira. Shout out to Zendaya. And shout out to you guys for having me in this production, which is looking more like a production. Because I went back to see the first episode. Man, that was a struggle. I'll tell you what. But yeah. Uh, any final words from you two before we head out? Nah. <laughs> oh yeah, stay fine with the PH. I forgot about <laughs> I almost forgot about that. But yeah, thank you guys. Um, that's it.